Uh, greetings. I'm here today with Mr. Steve McDonnell, who was commander of the Royal St. Lawrence Yacht Club in uh, 2012 and 2013, and is currently acting as the past commander on the executive. Hi, Allison. <laughs> Good. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me here today and doing this. Oh, fantastic. Yes, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, so we have a bunch of questions that we're asking, and uh, just a little bit about your background. When did you join the club? I joined the club here, I think it was 1990, when I uh, initially joined it. And ironically, I was not a boater at the time. Uh, I was uh, um, looking for a place where I could entertain clients. And uh, I elected to uh, come to the Royal St. Lawrence uh, <clears throat> because it's a, it's a view off the balcony in the summer, for those who haven't seen it, which is second to none. It's a very relaxed atmosphere. And I also used the club for doing uh, quite a bit of fundraising that I was involved with the Lakeshore General Hospital, John Abbott College. So it was the perfect setting. Perfect. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, so what attracted you? It was the relaxed atmosphere? I guess. It was the relaxed atmosphere. I'd looked here and I'd looked at a couple of other, of other uh, clubs in the area, which I'd been to. And um, I found when I brought clients here, they all had the same reaction. Gosh, you know, we've been to these fancy restaurants all over the place, but they came here, they sat up on the balcony, they were just in awe of the lawn, the harbor, and the first thing they said was, oh, gosh, I haven't had a club sandwich in years. And, uh, you know, they'd have a club sandwich and a beer, and they always said, do you think we'll have time to take a walk around before we leave? So it was, uh, it was a very... Uh, relaxing place for that. And it took me about two years uh, until I finally decided to buy a boat and I bought I bought a boat here out of the, uh, that was at the club. Did, was that, is Tyra your first boat? No, I bought another boat uh, which was called Cash Flow at the time mm -hmm. and uh, which is still here at the club under another name. And I had that first boat for about 22 years. So it was a, uh, it was a bayliner, a, a 32 foot bayliner. And yeah, then uh, 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 Terry came along in uh, 2013. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Uh, have you done any cruising on your boat? Done a fair amount of cruising. I've done uh, I've done the whole St. Lawrence. So I've done from yeah. the Gulf of the St. Lawrence. I've done all the way to Lake Ontario. Uh, I've done uh, Georgian Bay. Uh, I've done uh, all of the cana historic canals. So the Rideau Canal, the Chambly Canal, and uh, and also the Trent Severn Canal. So. Uh, and of course, the Thousand Islands. So uh, we've gotten good use out of it. That's fantastic. Um, when were you commodore? It was uh, 2012 and 2013. Yeah, 2012, 2013. Uh, what are you specific? Is, what are the specific things you, that were highlights of your term as commodore? Well, the club had been going through um, a shrinking process up to that point. I guess from uh, from the 80s uh, through into the 90s. And um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the main challenge, I think, that I found at the club was to bring it into the 21st century. Uh, <clears throat> we didn't have any website, so we created a website at that point. Uh, all of our accounting was being done manual. We brought in some electronic uh, devices and, and software for doing the billing. That's now a standard event, but was uh, was bringing the club up to uh, modern standards. So that was one of, the, one of the big challenges. And of course, in, in 2013, uh, it was a unique year because it was our 125th anniversary. So we all, you know, we were planning a, a big party. <laughs> were there many members of the same level of members then as there are, there are now? Or? Probably fewer. fewer? The, uh, the, the fewer members and the, uh, the uh, average age of the membership was increasing. Um, that's a polite way of saying that the younger members were not as as uh, as numerous and of course the members as we kept moving up into the uh, into the senior categories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what was the club's culture like during your term? Well, again, we had, we were doing, going through a transition. The, the club had been, and I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, this was re known as an Anglophone club, uh, you know, way back when in the 1800s, just by, by virtue of the, uh, the, the West Island and, and the community in the West Island. 
We were moving towards a bilingual club uh, into the membership, and uh, and also, uh, which is another thing during my term, is uh, we move the club into bilingual communications, mm -hmm. which is easier said than done because uh, you know it involved translation, and as you know, it, it just you're involved with still to this day. Yep. And uh, so the, uh, the 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 there was a rejuvenation of the club starting at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, were the, what were the external factors that impacted the club? Well, the external factors here, you know, from the 70s when the, the, the you know, the large exodus of the Anglophone community, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it was from the West Island outwards. Uh, we had come through, we had just been coming through a recession in the 80s. And uh, so those were the external uh, factors impacting it. But the big thing that impacted us from a financial point of view was the um, up to that point the club didn't pay a whole lot of property taxes but when the city of montreal uh, tried to merge with most of the municipalities the exception of dorval which but there was an agreement that that uh, the cities and and uh, we would now be paying uh, uh, tax towards the city of montreal so effectively our tax cost went from about seventy thousand to one hundred eighty thousand dollars overnight Divide that extra hundred thousand by the number of members we were. It, it put quite a financial dent in our uh, in our abilities to continue growing the club. Yeah. Oof. Um, what is the best thing about the club? What I liked about the club, and I said right from the very beginning, was just the feeling. When I come to the club, my uh, I'm retired now, but at the time, my business hat stayed in the car. Mm -hmm. And when I came to the club, we were all even, we were all boaters. Uh, I particularly enjoy in the spring and in the fall, uh, the, the camaraderie of working on the boat. And of course, everyone's got a better wax and a better solution and mm -hmm. a lot of kibitzing that goes on. But that's what I enjoy. It's the family, uh, the, 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 the family atmosphere. Uh, so at that time, what was popular in boats? What kind of boats would you like to see when you were walking around on the piers and on the docks? Evolutionary and growing. So no one changed their boat for a smaller boat. Every every boat was changed. You know the old expression "footitis." Well, that's not true. It was more like five footitis and ten footitis that was going on going on at the time. We also. Uh, we had the uh, we had been working on and we were successful in getting the Canadian uh, Opti uh, championships here at the club, uh, so that was a big organization. Valerie uh, Leving was my uh, uh, my rear commodore, and I'm proud to say that uh, I was involved in, in in convincing Valerie to join us and being eventually becoming the first female commodore of the club, and. Uh, so we had a lot of investment into the uh, into the club. We had bought a couple of new. Uh, well, they're still here. The two little Boston Whalers. Uh, we had we had bought a number of sails, a number of opties, and uh, the competition went on. It was we had people from. It was a Canadian uh, competition, but we had people from basically all over the world, from Bermuda, from the UK, from Europe, and uh, so the executive was a dynamic executive. I had mentioned a little earlier that we also had the 125th anniversary coming on. So because of that, we were planning to, to, to you know, the, this was in 2013, but it's really the planning started in 2012. So we had a special team working on the event. It was a, it was a ball. Uh, Jerry Girouard at the time um, piloted that uh, project. Valerie uh, piloted the, uh, the Opti Championship. Uh, Louis Kipton on the buildings and grounds of getting everything spruced up and ready for the event. And uh, and the ever ongoing repairs to the club were uh, were going on. Tom Fisher was my uh, vice commodore, mm -hmm. so it was a it was a good team. And uh, what were the committees like? Well, the committees, as I said, the the uh, you know we had the 125th anniversary going on, and uh, I mean that in, you know that went as far as inviting um, Prince Philip uh, to join us. We had to. Uh, to, to you know, to find out what are the protocols and 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 how you go about it. I'm not used to inviting Prince Phillips, but uh, <laughs> he was kind enough to write to the club and offers all his his best wishes. Um, marketing was a was a new committee that we had uh, we had developed. We had a we had a, a fairly active um, young adults uh, 
uh, committee for the 20 to 30 year olds and they had their own uh, well the representative on the board and and uh, and uh, their own events and their own parties um, with the introduction of Santa Claus to the club for the kids that was brought about that year by someone I know well and uh, <laughs> so I said we were firing on pretty well uh, all cylinders it sounds really active it sounds exciting it was yeah yeah Wow. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being here today. We really okay. appreciate it.